We are back in Lincoln's Pershing Auditorium and Nebraska ETV Sports presents the 1997 Nebraska State High School Volleyball Championships. And tonight in the Class C1 Championship game, it's the Columbus Skoda Shamrocks and the Hershey Lady Panthers. A reminder, this Nebraska ETV Sports exclusive is brought to you in part by viewers like you who are financial contributors to Nebraskans for Public Television. I'm Kevin Kugler, joined tonight by Kathy Wieskamp. We'll discuss this final in just a moment, but first, let's go to state volleyball announcer Barry Moore for the Class C1 player introductions. Great tournaments and outstanding seasons. Unfortunately, only one team's gonna win tonight, but together, these teams have won 49 victories and have only four losses, and we suggest that whoever you are, wherever you're from, you get up and give these girls a hand for being where they are tonight. Thank you. And now let's meet the girls. The score under home, their record is 25 wins and one loss. Welcome Hershey High School. Introducing the non-starters, number 10, Amanda Kane. Number 11, Tanya Arnsdorf. Number 17, Amy Jorgensen. Number 18, Julia Hibner. Number 22, Stephanie Simpson. Number 23, Emily Hibner. Number 24, Chelsea Meeks. Number 25, Ashley Brown. The starters, number 12, April Jorgensen. Number 13, Nicole McConnell. Number 15, Chris Bringawat. Number 20, Kristen Linderman. Number 21, Stacy Vaughn. Number 27, Laura Colvin. The coach is Amy Byer. The assistant coach is Susan Lawson and Susie Johnson. The score under guests, their record is 24 wins and three losses. Welcome again, Columbus Scotus. <laughs> Introducing the non-starters, number one, Steph Cruz. Number four, Sarah Kuhneman. Number five, Shanna Melliger. Number nine, Marcel Mosier. Number 11, Amy Hayes. The starters, number two, Christy Corp. Number six, Holly Van Akron. Number seven, Julia Grennan. Number eight, Heather Van Akron. Number 10, Andrea Porzen. Number 12, Kim Rickert. The coach is John Peterson. The assistant coach is Janet Cooley, Julie Blazer, Audra Jedlicka, Jedlicka, and the officials on the C1 court, Carol Ernst and Brad Johnson. And now, let's play volleyball. One time, C1 finals here at Pershing Auditorium, and it, hopefully it's something like we had in D1, Kathy. What a great matchup that was in D1. This should be a dandy as well. Hershey comes in 25-1 and one on the season, their third year in school history to make it to state. They are a relative newcomer. Columbus Scotus is the veteran. This is sort of Columbus Scotus South here. That's right. They have been here many times. In fact, they've been in the title game each year but one of the last seven, and they are two-time state champs trying for their third, third consecutive tonight. So we come in here again a little bit different than experiences levels, but again, both teams have earned their way here, and again, hopefully this is just like the first match we had tonight. It has been a good start to our evening session. Scotus and Hershey getting ready to go, and you saw, you may have seen as the players are being introduced, the Hershey players, fittingly enough, throw Hershey's kisses to the crowd. Oh, fun. <laughs> Mainly to their own Hershey fans. I don't think any of them came SCOTUS way because we're on the SCOTUS side of the yeah. field here and we didn't see any. Not real sure why that is. <laughs> but it won't affect 
our right. feelings in this one. We're not hurt at all. Hershey Lady Panthers, 25 and one. Amy Byer talking about this team before the match said defense and blocking tends to be a weak spot for this team and they need to really work hard on their passing and their experience is a strength, she feels. And here we go, we're underway. Hershey in the blue, Scotus in the green and white. And that one a kill for Hershey and a side out right away. The Panthers strike first. That was Chris, Chris and Linderman does a nice job. Way to start her team off. And back to serve is Stacy Vaughn. Scotus going to work. Nice up there by Vaughn. And now Linderman will try, and she's long. A side out to Columbus Scotus. And again, you see the early game jitters for both teams. Right. Just those little errors and just kind of getting familiarized to the court and getting in a rhythm. Serving Christy Court, one of the veterans on this Scotus team. Chris Bringawatt. Nice up. Can it be saved? It cannot. Hershey really working there, but a point for the Skoda Shamrocks. Nice job to keep it alive again. Just couldn't get to it quite to push it over. one nothing early on here in game one of the C1 final. Fourth to serve. Tough serve and a good receive there. But a free try coming up, but instead it falls to the floor. Should have been a free ball for Skotis, but it came low enough off the hand of Bringawat. Right, Bringawat did a good job, again, sending it over as aggressively as she could in the situation. Kristen Linderman serving. Hershey trails, 1-0. Julia Grennan dug out. And now Skotis steps up again. This is Grennan again, and Grennan finds the floor. You'll get a chance to see Grennan run a lot of quick attacks. They're very good at that, and she's good about getting in there. She's got a one-on-one -on -one situation because of the quick play and transition. one nothing. Skotis out in front. In game one, the two-time defending state champ. And this one sent over, and a kill for Hershey. So the Lady Panthers not intimidated by the two-time champs. They're going right after them. Bringing a lot, does a nice job up front. She's real aggressive, and I'm watching her. She's a good use hitter, finds a block, and takes it off them so they can't control it. April Jorgensen serving. And again, Brennan blocked back. Now they'll try Melliger. And now bring a lot. Bring a lot again with the kill, and it's tied up one point apiece. Bring a lot, like I said, is good about seeing the blockers and able to hit around them or take advantage of their hands. Serving is April Jorgensen. A very experienced team for Hershey. A lot of seniors on that roster. And that one off the arm of Stacy Vaughn. Side out to SCOTUS. Julia Grennan. You see the unusual, the different spelling of the name Julia. 1-1 the score, Colvin, and now Bringawat again. That one, nice save by Korth, and it's sent long by Scotus, and a side out back to Hershey. That, uh, again, really, both teams that are making a few little hitting mirrors here, just trying to get comfortable in the situation, and we're in side out back and forth because of it. 1-1 our score. Sent over and down to the floor. This time, it is Holly Van Ackert. Um, I believe April Jorgensen sent that over and did a good job. She's left-handed there. And so again, the block needs to key in on that and again, adjust for that and on their setup. Blocked back, and now SCOTUS will set it up. And just tapped over by Christy Korth and a point for SCOTUS, they lead it 2-1. A good job. Again, some they're going to have a lot of experienced smart hitters here, and, and you're going to see different areas being attacked by SCOTUS. Deep serve and a tough one to handle Colvin, and now just going over with it is McConnell. Quick hit, the lefty Rickert. And here comes SCOTUS again. Set up this time and just sent over, so now Hershey with a try. McConnell can't get it done. And now Rickert tries again. The lefty swinging free on that right side. Fourth sets it over. Into the net, set back over by Hershey. Scotus, good recovery there. Good rally going on here. Blocked back. 
Hershey cannot recover. Good rally there. Both teams really hustling after balls. Vonda tried to get in there quick to try and beat the block. Just was a little bit low and hit it right into the block. Three to one. Skotis leading in game one. Serving Steph Cruz. And attacking Stacy Vaughn. Back over but wide, and Hershey will get it back on the side out. Vaughn does a nice job. She'll hit from the outside there off serve receive. She also likes to run a slide behind. We haven't seen her do it yet, but she's very effective there also. And a service error by Nicole McConnell. Right back over to Scotus and back to serve Holly Van Acker. <laughs> and that serve just on the line. An ace serve and a point for Columbus Scotus. Hershey thought it was long and it did not Stay in by much. That's right. I think just on the outside edge of the line. <laughs> Van Ackerd serving again. Another ace serve for Holly Van Ackerd. 33 aces on the year. Two of them. Two more of them, Added I should say. That. Now, that's right. 5-1 SCOTUS with the advantage. <laughs> Linderman on the attack. Great up. up. by Heather Van Ackerd. Hershey will continue on the attack. Linderman this time doesn't take any chances. Linderman does a nice job. She gets the ball here. Actually, she's coming right in between. The block didn't see it close. Hit it right in between there. Scotus leading 5-1. Hershey to Rickard. Pretty set and a pretty kill. Nice job by Rickard. Again, they, Scotus likes to run a quick attack, and this is a short um, set behind. Does a nice job getting in there and snapping that down. Christy Korth, an experienced player for the SCOTUS team, and it's so helpful to have that at your center position. An ace serve for SCOTUS, and it's 6-1. Columbus SCOTUS out in front. Korth does a good job, and, and setter is such a key. It's like the quarterback of the team, and with her experience, she's got been here several times. Really is a, um, somebody who can really take this team and do good things with it. Rickert serving, SCOTUS leading by five. Back. And now the set and the kill rolling off the block. Julia Grennan got the lucky roll and it fell down. She's a little bit early on her time, but does a good job getting her hand on the ball, just getting it over the net. And, up. and Hershey will take a timeout. Scotus leading 7 to 1 here in game number one and threatening to run away with this first game. And you can see right now the defending champions. There's a reason they're back to defend their title. They're a very good volleyball team. Very good team, and again, that's year in and year out. They're here, and, and with leadership by the players that are veterans and have been in this this situation before, and they just, this is how it is, and, and uh, John Peterson does a really good job with his kids, again, preparing them for this situation. Now you see John Peterson has been in many of these situations. Amy Byer, I'm sure, reminding her team, you know, we are the number one seed. We're here for a reason. Scotus, the number three seed coming into this one as the defending champs. They came out of a very tough district. And that one finds a home from the far side. This time, Michelle Moser drops it in. Nice job. She just takes it a little off speed and drops it over that front row off walker and in front of the back row player. So it's eight to one. Scotus out in front. Hershey will try the quick set. Can't get anything working with that. Now the quick set for Scotus, and a good job by Hershey's Linderman to keep it alive. Now she'll send it over. Free try for Scotus, and a miscommunication. Everybody's saying, you got it, and right. no one got it. The situation like that, the team's called free ball. The front row really works to get off the net so that they're ready to attack, but the back row generally should take that ball so that front row can speed up the offense. Block back and to the floor. Big block that time for Hershey, Chris Bringawatt. Chris Bringelot does a nice job. She's rotated now back up to the front, and then it's going to really help the Hershey team hopefully get on a roll. But it's kind of a one-on situ situation there. Scotus leading 8-2 in game number one. Fourth sets it for Grennan. And Grennan with the kill, side out, back to Scotus. 
Good job by Grena. She's hitting the, again off the serve receive from the outside, and then she'll come into the middle and run that little faster offense. But she's got a nice swing um, from the outside as well. Andrea Torzen into the game for Steph Cruz. She moves into the front row and fourth back to serve. Blocked away, a collision between Grennan and, and, and Forth. Quick set at the net, a battle. Great play. Again, that. bring a watt just long and a point for Scotus. Good idea by bring a watt, just missed the back corner. Hershey did a good job even keeping that ball up off of the block. Did a nice job in getting a, an attack off of it. Nine to two, Scotus leading here. Game one of the C1 final. Quick set, we've got into the net against SCOTUS. So one of the SCOTUS players in that front row got a little too far, and it goes back to Hershey on the side out. Class C1 final, game one. SCOTUS in the lead right now, nine to two, and that one just long on the serve, and error goes back over to SCOTUS. So they turn it right back, Kathy. Yep, back and forth. You can't miss the serve system if you work hard to get it. Heather Van Ackeren, the sophomore, five foot seven, back to serve for Scotus. Close to the net, and Hershey, a nice job to recover from that one. Now the right side attack by Torzen, and Hershey able to keep it alive. Great effort by Bringlewatt. And blocked back by Bringlewatt, and the Hershey Lady Panthers are fired up as they get it back. <laughs> That was a fun play. They call that a pancake. You just get your hand between the ball and the court, popped it up, and Hershey was able to convert on and finish with a solid block. Nice job. Nine to two. SCOTUS leading. And that one just wide of the corner. And a point for Hershey. It's now nine to three. More according to the scoreboard, Hershey's got a 10-9 oh. lead. That was a heck of a point if Way. they got seven points for that or that's eight a, points. That's a big scoring. <laughs> Should be nine to three, SCOTUS leading. And it is nine to three, so that's what we're gonna say. <laughs> SCOTUS leading, and a great up. Can they keep it alive? They cannot. Good effort there from Nicole McConnell as she got a hand underneath it, but couldn't get enough. Right, uh, Hershey's really doing a nice job, really pursuing balls and, and giving all they got to try and get them up. Nine to three, the score. SCOTUS leading. And SCOTUS out in front by that six-point margin, 9-3. Steph Cruz, excuse me, Julia Grennan back to serve, and Grennan's serve is long, and it's a side out to Hershey. So SCOTUS hanging on to that six-point lead at 9-3, and serving for Hershey, Chris Bringawada, she moves into the back row. Punched up by Korth, and now a free try for Hershey. Set up and in the middle of the kill that time by Stacy Vaughn. Stacy Vaughn does a nice job. Her and bring water opposite in the rotation. So one one's up at opposite times and really doing a nice job being real effective. She's really got a lot of spring as she's up there and jumps well and does a nice job hitting it around. And John Peterson wants to stop a run before it gets started. It's nine to four. SCOTUS leading, but SCOTUS with a timeout. There you see John Peterson. He's been here before. Amy Byer has not. She has been at Hershey for 10 years. She started her career at Hershey and has brought the Hershey Lady Panthers to the state tournament two of the last three years. And this, a trip to the final for Hershey and an exciting time for them. They trail right now nine to four here in game number one. Very young fan. <laughs> with no hand. There it is, peeking out of that shirt. Dad's gonna get it out there, everyone. Trying to keep warm. It's been chilly in Pershing Auditorium today, as it has been outside Outdoors of Pershing Auditorium, well. too. And a kill that time right off of the timeout by Kim Rickert, and a good timeout by John Peterson. Rickert does a nice job here. You'll see she just drops it in front of all the defending players and, and makes them try and scramble and get up there. Yeah, Hershey looked like they were waiting for the power and right. kind of got caught leaning back a bit for it. SCOTUS by five, game one of the C1 final. Korth will set it up. And the kill by Rickert. Kim Rickert, when she's been in the front row, has been very good. Done very, a good job. And 
a lefty, that middle attack coming in at him, doing well, heading to the right side also. 10-4, SCOTUS leads. That one just in on the far side, and Hershey gets the side out. Stacy Vaughn again, good attack. Stacy Vaughn does a nice job again. Her and Bring a Watt, very effective. Um, good, strong attackers, and you'll see them attacking from several different areas. Hershey's only loss this year to 25 in one season was to Sutherland three games before the state tournament. For Columbus Scotus, two losses to Grand Island Central Catholic and the other to Pius. So no slouches any of those teams. And that one, a kill this time for Holly Van Ackern. She will go back to serve now for Scotus, leading 10-4 here in game number one. Tough serve from Van Ackern. And a free ball coming up for Scotus. Fourth sets, and this time on the far side, the kill thrown down by Heather. Holly Van Ackern. This is Heather, Holly serve. Heather, you're right, Holly serve. So the Van Ackern girls are coming through here. 11 to four, SCOTUS leading by seven. Nice up by Holly Van Ackren. And now a free ball for Hershey. Try to take advantage, here's Linderman. SCOTUS not able to really get into any kind of an offense right now. Another free try for Hershey coming up. Again, Linderman right down the line and in, a side out to Hershey. Nice job, Grenon was there, but I think she wasn't thought for sure it was in or out, and so um, landed right on the line off, actually right beside her. SCOTUS in control right now, leading 11 to four. Hershey trying to climb back into this one. Holly Van Acker blocked off. Linderman blocked again. Vaughn, and now SCOTUS will set up. For Van Acker again, that one just wide. And a point for Hershey. Boy, we've seen some very close shots for both teams. Today. Right. Um, and again, hitting down the line, uh, you're working with a very narrow area there to hit, and you have to be very accurate. 11 to 5. And Scotus gets it back on the side out. That time, touched by Heather Van Acker. That's right. Perfect placement, just over the block in front of the defense. Nice job. She's showing good control when she goes up to attack. Right. And smart shot selection. 11 5. Scotus out in front. Linderman. Fourth. And now Van Acker over the net with it. Hershey will try to set things up. They'll try Linderman again. Block to the floor. And a big block set up that time in the front row by Julia Grennan. Julia Grennan is doing a nice shot. She is a good solid block up there as well as her offense. And she's um, really been strong up in the front so far. So Hershey takes their second timeout. SCOTUS leading it 12 to 5 here in game one of the C1 final. And it has been a SCOTUS controlled game one so far. They have looked like the defending champions and they've played like the defending champions. And it's been an entertaining one. Lieutenant Governor Kim Roback sitting in on this one, enjoying some state volleyball action at Pershing Auditorium today. 12 5 your score with SCOTUS out in front. In game one, the C1 final here on Nebraska Public Television along with Kathy Wieskamp, I'm Kevin Kugler, and we're certainly happy that you're with us tonight. It's been a full day of volleyball, and we still have one champion to crown after this one in Class B. 12-5 well, the score right now. Set up to Van Akron. Heather Van Akron again, and she's found a home on that far side. She's really doing a good job here, and as the game progresses along, just again, smart shot selection. She's reading the situation and hitting what is available to her. 13 to five, SCOTUS leading here in game one. Deep serve, and a tough one to receive. Linderman goes long, and game point number one for Columbus SCOTUS, as they lead it 14 to five, and the Hershey side of Pershing Auditorium quiet now. <laughs> As SCOTUS is taking control in game one, but Linderman able to get it back through the block on the side out. Nice job by Hershey. They stay in there being really aggressive, fighting off that game point. So back to serve goes Stacy Vaughn. And again, Van Ackert 
Good up for Hershey. Linderman will try, and it does not get over. A four-hit violation against Hershey, and a side out to Skoda. So game point number two coming up. Skoda starts him young in the cheerleading ranks. 14-5. <laughs> Fourth serving for game one. Into the net, and it is game one to Columbus Scotus, 15 to five, in a fairly impressive performance Columbus for the Scotus defending champions. Here we get a chance to look at that final serve. Again, Scotus is serving very tough, and they finish it off with an ace serve. Ball set right into the net. Christy Korth doing the honors. Here's the ace again. And it goes right off the arms of Nicole McConnell, right into the net. And that concludes game number one of this C1 final. 15-5, SCOTUS leading it over Hershey. And there's our young cheerleader. <laughs> SCOTUS fans happy, but Hershey now with a little bit of work to do as they are down 15-5. If you're Amy Byer, what do you tell your team in the huddle now? SCOTUS really dominant in game one. Well, I think she just, again, they need to focus on their things. They've got some strong attackers. They need to use them. About a serve received, um, SCOTUS had, I believe, three or four ace serves. They really need to get that ball up so that they can run their offense. Defensive-wise, I felt that, that they um, have been very scrappy at times, really pursuing balls, and they just need to continue that and get things going offensively for them. So SCOTUS wins game one, 15-5. And I'll tell you, what a run. We talked earlier today about the run Bellevue West has had. SCOTUS has had almost an equal run, and they have almost maybe been even more impressive in their class because Grand Island Central Catholic has been battling them every step of the way for every season. They've been almost as consistent as SCOTUS. This year, because of a fluke in the way the districts were set up, those two teams met in the district final instead of in the state final where they usually meet. Right, it's really unusual not to see the two of them here again, and it's fun for both those two schools to be here. Um, they enjoy playing each other because they like the competition um, and kind of the rivalry between each other, but it is a friendly rivalry. And so they kind of had their Many, they had a really tough district and they did a good job coming out of it. So they kind of have a, their many state tournament there and, and then had to do it all over again coming up here this weekend. And so, um, yeah, it is kind of unusual, but it also has been very um, successful for them to be competing against such strong teams in and out each year. And they always have a great battle with Grand Island Central Catholic and they really didn't get the best of that battle this year. They were two and two, but that second win came in the conference final and that was the one that got them the trip to the state tournament. So I guess that's it's better right to win time. at the right time than to win all the time. That's right. So SCOTUS wins game one 15 to five over Hershey and the Lady Panthers with some work to do. The number one seed Hershey and the number three seed Columbus SCOTUS. And SCOTUS had their way with Hershey in game number one. They are one game away from their third straight C1 title. And of course, some of these titles for SCOTUS were won in Class B. They won titles in 86 and in 90. They were the runners up in 91 and 93 in Class B, and then they were dropped to classification, along with Grand mm -hmm. Island Central right. Catholic. They just stick together. Hershey serve Van Acker to the net, and Hershey cannot get it over. I do not think as it goes way up in the air and down. So a tough job for Hershey to get it over and a side out to Columbus SCOTUS. I thought they'd had a four hit violation before that last hit, but regardless, it's a SCOTUS side out. Fourth will serve. Game two just underway. And that one long. And a point for SCOTUS. They lead one nothing in game two. Hershey just needs to settle down here a little bit. They're making a few errors. Um, they're, they just need to start off here, get a good kill here. And there it is, the kill from Chris Bringawatt, who was the bright spot for Hershey in game one. Right, Bringawatt does a nice job. She really reaches high, and actually there she hits it right um, through the arms of the blocker. A serve ties us at one. And back to serve again, Kristen Linderman. Linderman is a good server. She's a tough server for a team. She can get on her team, run, run points for a team. She led the team in service aces this year and added one there. Tough attack that time from Julia Grennan. Hershey does a nice job just to get it over. Far side, touched over that time 
And I believe on the attack, it was Andrea Torzen. I believe so too. She does a nice job, again, hitting shots. The block didn't get closed. They were keying in on Heather Van Akron, left it open and put the ball down. Skotis serving, tied at one. Game two of the C1 final. And here's Holly Van Akron, and Holly Van Akron does what Heather Van Akron has been doing, gets the kill. That's right, doing a nice job. Again, they're being smart in their placement of their attacks. You don't always have to hit it hard to get a kill. 2-1 SCOTUS in game two. SCOTUS will set it up close to the net and push back. We've got a violation into the net and a side out to Hershey, but Either way, Chris Bringawatt was right there and she had put it on the floor. Right, she was ready to take that ball. The ball was just set tight and Hershey ends up with the side out. Two to one, Skotis out in front here in game two. Skotis winning game one rather easily, 15-5. And now another kill for Holly Van Acker. She's starting to assert herself in game two on the offensive end. Yeah, Holly's doing a good job out here. She did a good job serving in the, in the first game and here she is in the front row being really aggressive also. Brennan serving for Skotis and an ace serve. Everybody in the back row for Hershey a little confused and that one in by a good three, four feet. Right. Just need to have some communication there, talk to each other. It's hard to watch the ball and the line. 3-1, Skotis leading. And that one right off the tape on the top of the net. And it goes back to Hershey on the next serve. Serving and into the back row, Chris Bringawatt. And she serves it promptly into the net, gives it right back to Skotis. For a dominating performance in game one, it took Skotis a while. Hershey did not go quietly. Right. Um, they just kept hanging in there again, very scrappy on their defense. And, and we did have some long rallies in there. And so the score doesn't show really maybe how well they have done. 15-5 was the score in game one. Scotus leading 3-1 here in game two. Good tall block set up there by Scotus. And a tough up. Can they keep it alive? Great, Great hustle, hustle by Scotus. Oh, what a play. Heather Van Acker. And that one rolls into the net and will not fall. So there you see sometimes hustle will net you a point. It certainly did there. Yeah, you got to love that pursuit of the ball. I mean, never quit on a ball. You have a chance in that situation. And then they converted. They got it over and ended up getting the side out. 4-1. SCOTUS leading over the Hershey Lady Panthers. And a substitution now for Hershey as Nicole McConnell steps out. And Stephanie Simpson comes into the front row. Simpson, a 5'11 senior. 4-1, SCOTUS out in front. And an ace serve makes it 5-1, SCOTUS. And the Shamrocks starting to look strong here in game two. But they're being really tough, strong with their serving, and it's creating some uh, ball handling problems for Hershey. Cruz will serve again. Another good serve, a tough one to receive. And this time, good up by Holly Van Acker. She'll try the attack. Hershey sends it over that one long off the hand of Stephanie Simpson. Simpson just into the game, and that's a tough spot to be thrown into. Right, and was, she was kind of up in the net trying to play the ball, didn't get off to having a strong approach, so basically just to stand there and jump. Six to one, SCOTUS leading. Close to the net, and a lift. Another point for SCOTUS, and that's going to result in a timeout. Amy Byer has seen it up, and Hershey will take their first time out of game two. SCOTUS in control right now, leading seven to one in game number two. And Hershey is a little bit out of sorts right now. Right, they're um, just having trouble. SCOTUS is really kind of exerting themselves here too, or pushing ahead. Again, they, they're confident after winning game one. They were slowing and getting it going a little bit, and, and Hershey hung in there, but um, SCOTUS has really stepped up here a little bit in game two. So off the timeout, it's seven to one. SCOTUS leading. And SCOTUS serving, Steph Cruz continuing to serve. She's run off two straight points for the Shamrocks. Cruz serving again. Far side, through the block and home goes Stacy Vaughn. Stacy Vaughn did a nice job again. She's rotated to the front. She's made a difference when she's come up there. And, and again, that's what made the first game kind of go a little bit longer just because she's been fighting to keep her Hershey team in. 
Checking out is Stephanie Simpson, and now into the back row is Nicole McConnell, and McConnell will serve. She has been generally a back row player this season for Hershey. Seven to one, our score. SCOTUS leading in game two. Good recovery for Hershey, but a free try now for SCOTUS. And Rickert makes him pay. Rickard's doing a nice job up there in the front. Um, she hasn't made very many errors and has converted several times for a kill. Shamrocks lead it 7-1 here. Game number two, and Holly Van Ackern on the serve. Van Ackern there with the up. And just set over by Christy Kors. And there's the shot, there's what having a veteran setter does for your team. Right, Christy's doing a nice job out there being a, a strong leader, and she just can feel when the right time to do those type of things are. Scotus leading 8-1. Another tough serve by the Shamrocks. Or she will set it up on the far side. Nice up there by Grennan. Here's Heather Van Akron, and she gets the kill, and another point for Scotus. They lead it 9-1. Heather Van Akron has really stepped up here and doing a nice job. She's um, really confident out there and um, she's only a sophomore. So good things to come and Holly Van Acker and her sister with another ace serve there. Mm -hmm. Her second ace of the night and it's 10-1 Shamrocks leading and a substitution for Amy Byer to try to slow down the Skoda squad. Checking out Nicole McConnell back into the game Julia Hibner. 10 to one the score, SCOTUS leading. They won game one, 15-5. They're on a big run right now. Nice up in the back row, here is Van Akron. Again, blocked back. Hershey's gotta get it over, and they do, and what a save oh. by SCOTUS, unbelievable. Just inches off the floor, and then the kill. SCOTUS looked like they just Ran out of gas on that play. They had hustled and chased after that ball, did a great job getting it back in. It's almost like they were breathing as the ball came back at them. You see it again. Right in. Back to live action now. Hershey setting it up offensively. And it cannot be saved by Steph Cruz. A point for Hershey. And it's now 10 2. Skoda still in control. Here you get a chance to see that again off the block. Um, Stephanie Cruz does a good job trying to get to it, just can't get her hands on it. Scotus will set things up now for Heather Van Acker, and that one just on the line and a side out. Nice sharp angle attack, and again, landing right on that sideline. She has been the main attacker for the Scotus Shamrocks tonight. A little bit of a surprise was not the leading attacker on the season. That was Julia Grennan. Through the block, nice up there by Cruz. Brennan will try, and Brennan is just long. Side out back to Hershey. Nice up by Cruz. They tried to run a little bit quicker attack there and didn't quite convert on it. 10-2 our score. Scotus leading in game two. They won game one, 15-5. Set up for Heather Van Acker. High into the air and a kill. Heather Van Acker staking her claim <laughs> to be interviewed by you at the there end of the There you thing. go. She's doing a great <laughs> job here. Again, about in the middle of game one, she really has just kind of sparked and has continued on through game two. 10 to two, SCOTUS leading here in game two. Hershey needs to find a way to get some points on the board. And Chris Bringawat may be the way as she just gets it on that back line. When she's in the front row, that's when they have a good attack up there. That's right, she really does a nice job. She is a very smart hitter. I like um, her shot selection, does a good job up front. 10 to two, our score. Scotus leading. This time a great attack. Andrea Torzen swinging right over the top on that one. Right, she's got a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, Hershey sometimes only blocks with one blocker and that again gives the advantage to the attack that they got more court to work with. So Scotus gets the serve back into the game again for Hershey is Nicole McConnell. Serving Heather Van Ackern. She moves into the back row now. Someone else will have to step up in the front for Scotus. Bring a lot. Block back. Sent over. And a kill this time for Nicole McConnell. 
And back to serve goes April Jorgensen. Well, they're hanging in there. They're really, you know, not just letting them take it away. Much like game number one, mm -hmm. the score indicates a SCOTUS domination, but really Hershey battled the whole way, and now we've got another point for Hershey off the lip. Yep, they're doing a good job. Again, they just keep battling in there. They're not really focusing on what the score is. They're just um, focusing on what they need to do each play. And a terrific good serve and a great up that time by Grennan. Free ball now for Hershey. And bring a lot gets the kill. 10-4. SCOTUS lead down to six. And I believe John Peterson, and he is. He's taking a timeout here just to slow things down as Hershey has run off three straight points. 10-4. SCOTUS out in front of Hershey. SCOTUS winning game one 15-5, but not a quick game, not a not an easy game. And We've played nearly an hour in this C1 final as we get closer to the 7.30 hour. And SCOTUS, although in control in game one and now in game two, they have not had an easy fight to stay in control. Right, Hershey is again just staying in there, really focused on what they need to do, taking one play at a time. They're not seeming to get flustered out there. But like I said, the score is really not indicator of how well Hershey is, is hanging in. The C1 final and following this, the Class B final to conclude our big day of volleyball here on Nebraska Public Television. We certainly hope you have enjoyed watching it. It's been a great day for champions. Holly Van Ackern gets it to fall and off the block it goes out of bounds. Nice job, she takes advantage of the block up front there and sends it directly out of bounds off them. Julia Grennan will serve, SCOTUS leading 10-4 and it goes right back to Hershey. A service error, and the Lady Panthers get another shot. Bring a Watt will serve as she moves into the back row, and that's, that's been trouble for Hershey so far in this match. And now Hershey sends it over, off the block, no, just wide. Looked like it may have been a touch, but they pulled down their arms in just enough time, and Skotis gets it back on the side out. So it went off the top of the tape yeah, and the skittered, net. skittered out of bounds. And Steph Cruz will check in and she will go back to serve for SCOTUS. Still a 10-4 game. SCOTUS serving deep for the most part today. And Holly Van Ackern sends it over. Set up in the middle. SCOTUS to try Van Ackern again. Jorgensen now. And a good up there by Grennan. Hershey gets it back again. Kept alive nicely by McConnell. Again, they try. And this time, Vaughn finds the floor. Great rally. Both teams really staying focused, staying balanced. Vaughn finishes it off with just a tip off to the right side. Scotus gets her hands on it, but just couldn't get it up. Playable. Nicole McConnell serving. Or excuse me. Yeah, that's Nicole McConnell serving. And that one just on the line. A little misdirection that time from the front row. And you'll see Korth here. Yep, just takes it and does a nice job. Nice flat um, ball coming over the net. Great shot there by our camera crew to see that one right on the line. That one long. And a point for SCOTUS. It's 11 to 4, the first point scored by either team in quite a for, while. For quite a while, all right. Holly Van Ackern. And Holly Van Ackern with an ace serve, her third ace serve of the night. She leads the team and has tacked on three to her team leading total. Okay, she's really doing a good job. She's come back there and serving really is your first line of defense. You serve tough and limit what their options are. And a lift violation against Hershey. 13 to four, SCOTUS leading and a timeout taken by Amy Byer and Hershey as SCOTUS is two points away from their third consecutive state championship. And that's a big um, big accomplishment. And again, they're, they're doing a nice job here. They're remaining very calm. The score shows them really dominating. Um, but again, that experience seems to be showing for them. Columbus SCOTUS this season has had some very impressive wins and they've played some very tough competition. At Tough loss to Lincoln Pius early in the year and some losses to Grand Island Central Catholic, but wins over 
tournament teams like Elkhorn. Mm -hmm. And of course, Grand Island Central Catholic in any other district would have been a tournament team. 13-4, SCOTUS leading. Nice up by Van Akron. And now Heather Van Akron will try that one to the floor. And game point number one, match point number one for SCOTUS coming up here, 14-4 in game two. Serving for the third straight title, Holly Van Akron. And there is your Class C1 state champions as Kim Rickert sends it home. <laughs> and it's just as fun this time as it was last year as they won. You can see the excitement on their faces. And what a run by Columbus Scotus and a great run by that team as well. The Hershey Lady Panthers finished the year 25-2 and two, and in only their third time ever in school history to the state tournament. They make it to the championship game and fall short and run into really a juggernaut in Columbus Scotus. Right, and they again, they did a nice job here tonight. The score maybe doesn't indicate how well they really did play, but they um, did a nice job to be proud to be here. And I think they, there's some smiles on their faces over there too. They know they did some good things here tonight. Well, Columbus Scotus really a Class B team that has just lost a few off its enrollment over the last few years. In fact, SCOTUS was in Class B all the way up until 1994 season, their first year in Class C1. Columbus SCOTUS with an enrollment of almost 100 more than most of the people in the C1 field. And they show their experience, they show their medal. And let's take a look quickly again at game point in this one as SCOTUS wins their third straight title. Again, we've got tough serving by Holly Van Akron, and she's been doing that all night. It kind of sets up the situation. Rickert is right there. <laughs> nice job. Great celebration by Rickert. And Rickert obviously quite <laughs> excited. Let's go over to state volleyball announcer Barry Moore for the Class C1 Championship Awards. Here are the awards for Class C1 runner-up Hershey. Well, the head coach and assistants Step out toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each team member. Players, as your name is called, please come out to get your medal. Amanda Kane. Tanya Armstrong. Amy Jorgensen. Julia Hipner. <laughs> Stephanie Simpson. <laughs> Emily Hipner. <laughs> Chelsea Neeks.
And now they're the champions. First, Coach John Peterson, we have a special award for you. Now, Coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team member, Steph Cruz. Sarah Kuhneman. <laughs> Shanna Mellinger. <laughs> Michelle Mosier. <laughs> Amy Hash. Christy Corp. <laughs> Holly Van Acker. <laughs> Julia Grennan. <laughs> Heather Van Acker. <laughs> Andrea Corson. Kim Ricker. <laughs> and now for these outstanding athletes in their school, here's the 1997 <laughs> State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Columbus Scotus, your champion for the third straight year. Only four schools in history have ever won three in a row. Impressive run for Columbus Scotus. As you heard Barry Moore say, only four teams in history have won three straight titles, and Scotus is now one of a very elite group, and that's something that the Shamrocks can feel quite proud of. When we come back, my partner Kathy Wieskamp will talk with the Titleists after this. To discover that in fact he gave Canadian Air Force. Watch for Canada's number one comedy show right here on this public television station. Hey, Sunday night at 11 Central Time on Nebraska Public Television. the celebration for Columbus SCOTUS as they are for the third time in three years the Class C1 state champions and down on the floor with the champion coach is our own Kathy Wieskamp. Hi 
right, Coach, congratulations. Three in a row. What an accomplishment. Uh, Kathy, I really, at the beginning of the year, I didn't think something like this could happen. These kids just came so far. And, you know, I, we were hoping we could play our best at the end. I thought we just played a great match, a match tonight. Um, normally, we see you on Grand Island Central Catholic. Um, it's kind of been a tradition here to you, too. You got to see them, though, in districts. Um, kind of a tough district to come out. Well, it was a great district. You know, Grand Island Central Catholic is just an outstanding team, and there's several other teams, ABC, Aquinas, Utica, Centennial, St. Paul, were all rated teams. So we felt very fortunate to come through that. And these kids just stepped up their level of play, and I'm so I'm just thrilled for them. Um, three state championships in a row, and it looks like we got some young players coming back. Heather Van Akron did a great job here tonight. Well, Heather is a, just a great all-around player, a great defensive player, can hit the ball. You know, she's not real powerful yet, but I think if she gets a little bit stronger, she'll hit the ball even harder. But she serves well, and great defensive player, and primary passer for us, and had a great tournament. Coming into this final, you've got a lot of experience. Hershey didn't quite have uh, as much. You guys really seemed to dominate. It was a, a struggle as we went along, but you only let them score nine points. Well, you know, we, we've had the experience of being down here. We only had the Holly Van Akron back and, and Christy Korth, who played back row for us. And, but these kids, you know, they've been around here a long time, and it certainly probably helped us. Um, yeah, I'm sure the experience, like you said, helped you. Do you feel going into next season after this that um, continued the leadership from those those things are going to carry over for you. Well, you certainly hope so. I mean, they're going to—we're going to have a lot of new kids again next year because we had some seniors that really stepped up that hadn't played before. I'm, that's what's kind of neat is they stepped up and they had their kind of their day in the sun today. And uh, we're going to have to have some other kids step up next year. But it's been a great ride all season. Seemed very balanced attack. You had a, um, attackers; they had to really honor several people. Really couldn't key in on really one player. That had to be a big advantage for you. Well, that's we've been very balanced all year because we had four kids with well over 100 kills, and our right side player only had over 50. But she had a big kill here, hit a big four outside, and so that's kind of been a key. And our setter distributes the ball really well, so it, it did make it difficult for them to block. Um, not only was your offense strong, but your defense, I was really impressed. They really pursued ball. There were several times we had them chasing to the yeah. sidelines and stuff. That's a common characteristic. Is that something you spent a lot of time on? Well, it's just, I think by nature, they're, they're, very, they're pretty quick, and by nature, they're very aggressive and very competitive, and they just don't like to let anything down. And we knew we had to be an excellent defensive team this year if we're going to compete because we don't have great size, and we didn't know if we could hit the ball very well. But as the season went along, we developed our offense a little bit better, and, and our defense has really, got, has really carried us a lot. Um, you're serving, too. I, I was really impressed. Um, Holly Van Akron, I believe, had three or four maybe uh, ace serves tonight. Um, did a really good job. Created some um, tough serve receive for Hershey. Well, she she had some, I thought she probably had the match of her life. Uh, she started last year right side. Didn't see many sets because we had some really good hitters besides her. And this year she really stepped up. And her, I thought she just had a great match. And her, and her serving was outstanding. And she had some big kills for us, too. So really an all-around team um, play here tonight. Well, I think that's okay. We I talked about, I think the team chemistry is probably the key. We just had a great team chemistry along. These kids just had lots of fun, and and I, I can't say how, how proud I am of them. Well, congratulations, Coach. We had a great match. Thanks again. Thanks, Kathy. We'll be back in a few minutes to talk to some of the players. One Zone. It's about what's important to you. Enter the One Zone, Friday night at 10 Central Time on Nebraska ETV's other channel, Educable. Where's Educable? It's on these cable systems on these channels. One Zone, Friday nights at 10 Central Time, only on Educable. Sessions at West 54th, public television's critically acclaimed music performance series. This week, pop music's newest renaissance man, Beck, raises the roof with an explosive set from his acclaimed album, Odelay. Yeah, and Ben Folds Five, the piano-driven trio from North Carolina, proving that sometimes less is more. This week on Sessions at West 54. Tonight at 12 Central Time on Nebraska Public Television. Next time, Stephen Hawking tackles the biggest question of them all. 
it's very hard to build a fully consistent quantum theory of gravity. A lot of people don't fully grasp the scope and richness of the structure involved. The question is, are we smart enough to understand the theory of everything? At the present time, no. An answer to everything next time on Stephen Hawking's Universe. Monday night at 8 central time on Nebraska Public Television. There's a neighborhood in Pittsburgh called the Strip District that's a great place to shop for fruits and vegetables, exotic foods, cheese, fish, Italian goodies, sausage, coffee, toys, and who knows what else. It's also a historic neighborhood where many industries began and where lots of people used to live. Come along for a tasty, provocative tour of this unforgettable neighborhood in a right, fresh documentary called The Strip Show. Wednesday night at 8.30 Central Time on Nebraska Public Television. to know what you think about this program. Call us toll free at 1-800-348-3709 and give us your opinion. Our toll free number again is 1-800-348-3709. We'll repeat this telephone number at the end of the program. And of course, Columbus SCOTUS, your C1 champion, and there you get a good look at Christy Court, the main setter and the starting setter the main cog I guess you could say in this SCOTUS offense and she really had a great match tonight as you see there reaching up all of her five foot four inch frame to get that one across the net and she is standing by with our very own Kathy Wieskamp. All right here I am with Christy Korth congratulations this is your third time here in a row. Does it feel any different um, as a senior? Is it more important or they're all just as important? No, this is more important because at the very beginning, no one really had a positive attitude toward us and they always thought they were going to get beat to GICC, but it's pretty awesome to get here, I'll tell you that. Um, normally we see you here in the finals with GICC. You really kind of had a mini state tournament coming into this. Um, was that helpful for you? You kind of had to repeat, do it then and got to do it again here. Well, I kind of feel sorry for them too because they played such a great game and had such a great season. And, well, I guess it was more of a state tournament then, too, but winning this game is pretty awesome, too. Um, your job as a senior and as a setter carries a lot of leadership responsibilities. Um, how have you accepted those, or have you grown in that responsibility as you've gone along here and become a senior? At first, I was really quiet, but after a while, I, I started to get on them a little bit, and then one of the players pointed out to me that if I could dish it out, I'd be ready to get a dish back to me, so I was pretty ready. Um, as a setter, too, you are touching every second ball. You're uh, having to make decisions in split seconds. Um, you did a great job distributing your set. You had several strong attackers, did a great job spreading it around. You, uh, I guess, is that just instinct? Are you feeling that, or have you learned that as well? Oh, I've learned that because Sean Griner and Stacey Roshi, they really t teach me a lot in these last couple years, so th they helped me a lot. Heather Van Akron really seemed to come alive in the middle of the first game. You did a nice job, too, feeding her. Did you see that happening for you and, and make that adjustment? She usually does that for us. She usually is the one to go to if we're having trouble, so she usually comes through. Um, as, a, we, as you've gone along, too, over the years, um, have you felt that uh, you've really matured as, as a setter, and are you going to continue to play after this? Is that something that you're looking at in your future? Uh, I'm first looking for soccer, but then down the road, probably volleyball. Well, congratulations. You did a good job and well-deserved honors. And Kevin, we're back to you in a few minutes, preparing for the Class B Finals, our final of the night. We'll be back after this break to get ready for our final game of the day.